a lot of great songs, and I'll let her tell you about this one. Well, some years ago, I followed a lot of my songwriting friends and decided to write a, an outlaw ballad. And uh, using the internet, I researched the story of Ned Kelly, and I got to this part, and I was like, okay, all right, definitely writing about this guy. He um, was at the turn of the century, back in the 1900s, and he was kind of a Robin Hood slash outlaw slash folk hero, and... Um, at the time of his apprehension, there was a petition circling Australia. 30,000 people had signed it, pleading for clemency. But uh, they, they caught up with him, and they had a shootout, and he gets shot 28 times and survives. How did he survive? Because just like uh, Clint Eastwood in A Fistful of Dollars, is that yeah. what you told me? That uh, he's wearing this handmade suit of armor that he had made out of hanging out plowshares. So he survives this, and they heal him up, only to later hang him. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I, no one hanging a dying, there's no fun in hanging a dying man, I'm just saying. <laughs> so it gets really depressing around the third verse, but anyway, here's, here's the, the ballad of Ned Kelly. <laughs>
thank you so much. You know, for those of you who haven't seen us before, we've been together for 18 years. Uh, three of us are original members, and we have two unpaid interns. <laughs> Come on, we don't pay you to raise your hand. Come on. <laughs> Anyways, happy to be here. Uh, we're named in honor of Bill Monroe, who is the father of bluegrass music. Bill Monroe, the bluegrass boy, started this music back in 1946. Um, none of us were in that band. <laughs> no matter what I look like. We have some. <laughs> you know, I go back to the days of silent radio. <laughs> Uh, the, new, the newest member of the band is our banjo player who joined us fresh out of high school and went on the road full time with us. Not only is he an amazing banjo player, he plays all the instruments, he's a great singer, and all around nice guy. Make welcome originally from Muncie, Indiana, now Minneapolis, Minnesota, on the banjo, David Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Shazam Shazam. Most of you who have been to our shows know that the Andy Griffith Show is my favorite TV show of all time. I have all the seasons on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, Netflix, iTunes, and special edition Wax Cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to continue on with an Earl Scruggs banjo tune. This is one of my absolute favorites of his. Earl Scruggs invented the, invented the three-finger banjo style that we use in bluegrass. And this is his tune called You Can't Stop Me From Dreaming. One, two, three!
How bad you a player bought that that instrument with his very first paycheck? You know what that instrument is? A dobro. It's also known as a resophonic guitar. Dobro is a name taken from one of the manufacturers, just like you know a cola. People call it Coke or a, a tissue. They call it Kleenex. Same thing with the dobro. That's actually a certain manufacturing manufacturer of a so resophonic guitar. I can blow my nose in that thing. No. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, he does a really good job on that. And, uh... You blow on it, you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to introduce, so there's no segue to this. There's, I, like to, I like to introduce the husband and wife team in our band over here. You blew on me, you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are they married, they're married to each other. <laughs> and we see... 20 plus years now. 20 plus years. Third, fourth anniversary of the November 18th, but thank you anyway for trying. 1995. <laughs> well, here's the, since we are in this art gallery, here's the, uh, the cultural portion of the program. This is Bluegrass Gothic. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm a movie lover, and I love it when they get all the, the little details right, you know, the, the, the clothing and the hairstyle and the way they speak. And sometimes they, they get it real wrong. Like when, when you see um, a Civil War movie and you see a bluegrass band playing, you know, the three-finger Earl Scruggs style that was developed around 1946. You know, that sort of indication they didn't do their research. But they did have a banjo style back in those days during the Civil War. Uh, that would be claw hammer style, or mountain style, or frailing style. Now, when he plays the bluegrass, he uses two finger picks and a thumb pick. He takes those off for this and just uses his fingers. And he's the first banjo player, and we've had a few in Mungo Crossing. Uh, but to six. Six, yes. He's, he's lucky number six. And he's been around for a long time. He's going to stick around. But uh, anyways... He uh, does a great job on this claw hammer style, and he's going to play a tune that Lisa wrote in honor of the, uh, the lonely cicada, and it's called Cicada.
and the Tijuana Grass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's Tijuana Grass. Yeah. Tijuana Grass is something completely different. Uh, <laughs> all right. Although, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't bet they have that in mind. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, it was Greatest Hits, and my, my favorite song on there was uh, Side B, number four. My <laughs>
hits of bluegrass music, and by the way, we know all five of them. And this one is 50 years old, Rocky Top, Tennessee. <laughs>
Check out his paintings up in front of the fiddlers. They're amazing. I wish I could do that. Well, there's a good friend of ours named Bill Isles from Duluth, Minnesota. Have you ever caught uh, the show of Bill and Kate Isles? They're amazing. They write wonderful songs, just beautiful harmonies. But anyways, the song that he's known for, and it's actually now uh, one of our most, most requested songs, is a song he wrote about his grandfather who immigrated to the United States from Germany settled in northern Minnesota in the Virginia area, and he'd work in a roundhouse at night repairing train engines. Now, during those cold Minnesota winters, hobos would come by looking for a warm place to sleep for just a few hours. We go to January. We go to Florida. And he would let them in. He, he was kind of mean. He'd tell them to sleep in the corner. But anyways, that's a whole other thing. Um, no, no, no. I should leave those jokes to that guy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there was another guy who worked on the grounds who, whose job was to keep the hobos out, but uh, his grandfather was a real kind man and he would let them sleep for a few hours. So he, uh, Bill wrote a song about his grandfather called Hobos in the Roundhouse. From seven to seven, every night of the week, fixing trains in the roundhouse, I work on my feet. And I told my children, hope the bed bugs don't bite. Cause I got hobos sleeping in the roundhouse tonight. From Akron to Hinkley, Prairie to Sheen. They are soldiers and lawyers, and I believe what they're saying. Oh, that's that pillow Take your gun, he said 
Center for having us here again. This is a wonderful place to play, and thank you so much for coming out and and being here. We love that. That's awesome. I gotta say that wall is so beautiful back there. I expected to say like Laugh Factory. Doesn't it look like we're in front of a comedy stage? No. <laughs> well, you wouldn't know by the comedy tonight. <laughs> You know, when we did our tour down in Florida and Georgia last year, Lisa got laryngitis for a month. And that was really tough. That was really tough. So Derek and I had to learn a bunch of songs to kind of fill in because people got sick of eight instrumentals in a row. So this is one of the songs we learned. We're going to leave you with this one. And then, gosh, we just might be back for a couple more. But this is called the Air Mail Special. <laughs>
did you ever see the Ken Burns Civil War documentary? Yeah. Um, there's a, a theme song they use for that, and people think it's a song from the era of the Civil War, but it's actually a song that was written in the 1980s by a guy named Jay Unger, who was at a fiddle camp in uh, Shokin, New York. And at the end of the camp, after making all these friends and having such a wonderful time, everybody went home and he was feeling kind of, kind of melancholy, sat down on a tree stump and wrote one of the most beautiful uh, fiddle me medallies I've ever, ever heard. It's called a Shokin Farewell.
thousand requests, and uh, we get a lot of requests for this song. This will be our last song. Uh, we performed in the year 2000. That was the same year a great movie called Old Brother Where Art Thou came out, which is made by uh, Minnesota-born filmmakers Joel and Ethan Cohen. We were actually at a show where the, uh, the librarian of the high school that Ethan Cohen went to, um, she had, has in her possession the copy of True Grits that, w that he checked out. He wrote his name in it, you know, and then later remade the movie, which I think is really cool. I also think it's cool that she stole the book. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a cool teacher. But anyways, uh, this is a song from that movie, and it was made famous by bluegrass legend George Clooney. And in his band, the Saki Bottom Boys, we'll leave you with this one. It's called I'm a Man of Constant Sorrow. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. 